Well, here we are again. Um, Amanda, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm lovely. I'm sitting across from you. <laughs> your, your flattery will get you everywhere. Everywhere. And we've known each other six years, seven years? I've been in real estate for five. So five. So five years. Okay. Because yep. you were at Kavish. I was. When we first met. I was. Yeah. And now you work for a national home builder, I to do. be not mentioned. Yes. Yeah. But they're big. They are big. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll chat about that a little bit because... You're my go-to for new home stuff. Which I love. Yeah. So you and I are the yeah. same. We like data or data, yeah. you know, yeah. to each their own. Yeah. And so I love data and data and new home facts. How long have you been in new home, Bill? Four years. Do you love it? Do you like it? I love it. Yeah. I say it's the dream job I never knew I had. It sounds cheesy, but it really is. How come? You know, um, I'm a cheesy person, so... I love real estate in the fact that your income is a reflection of your work. So if you want to be lazy and make 20 grand a year, be lazy, make 20 grand a year. If you want to work your butt off and make, you know, two, three, four, work your butt off, make two, three, four. Uh, but it's also very rewarding. You get to hand someone their keys. You can be part of a special moment in their life. I love that. I get very attached to the people that buy homes from me. And new build is like you get the smells and it, that's a whole nother level. It is. It's different. It's right? a different experience. My my job is not the same as a regular realtor. There's things I don't have to deal with, and there's things I have to deal with that they don't. So it's just its own experience. What are some things that you deal with that other realtors that just do residential uh, resale do? I mean, the number one thing is I work for a corporation. So that's why I've said we're not going to say their name on here yeah. because there's guidelines and expectations. And so... I'm not here to represent them. And you have to be understanding of you represent that brand versus your own brand and the things you say and do. And most realtors just don't do that. No. I don't think. Uh, most realtors aren't aware of their brand. No. And most realtors don't put forth the effort mm -hmm. to have proper systems in place. Mm -hmm. And most realtors don't have the foresight to know that it's a small town. Las Vegas is a very small two million person town. Yes. And you cannot burn bridges here. No. You need to shelve your ego. And whatever happens during a transaction, if you had a bad day, if your hamster died that morning and then something triggers mm -hmm. you to be in a bad mood, that can have ramifications that will continue along your career as you're a licensed agent in Las Vegas. Oh yeah. I, I say the same thing. It's a big city, but it's a small town. And I I am open to the fact that maybe one bad transaction may not determine you as an agent, but if I have two bad transactions with you, I blame you at that point. Oh, absolutely. Maybe maybe the client was difficult. Maybe just some weird stuff happened. I'm all about a second chance, but after the second chance, I'm like, no, it, it's you. Do you have agents right now that you just adore? Yes. In town, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. There are agents who when they walk through my door, I'm so excited. I hope to work with them again. There are agents that I am very fortunate are very loyal to me. And if they have a buyer looking for something that I am offering, they ask me first. They give me the first crack to try to sell them a home. How long did it take you to earn that right? That's amazing, by the way. That's huge. You know, it, it can be one transaction, but you really have to respect that agent and their role. And those agents, when they walk through my door, I pretty much talk them up to their client. And I just go, oh, you're so lucky that you have Jeff as your agent. He's one of my favorite agents to work with. You are in the best of hands. This is going to be amazing. And because sometimes I'm their first stop. Sometimes they're just meeting their agent in my parking lot. They've been talking online and the agent goes, okay, here's the office I'm going to meet you at. I've had it happen several times. So it kind of wow. eases them. To go, oh, wow, this this third party really respects my agent. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. I, I don't think say about it, that. I don't say it if I don't mean it either. Right. And you're you're very good with, with your social media content. Mm -hmm. You're good with putting out also just, hey, here's what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on, mm -hmm. which I'm a big fan of your stuff because you are tip of the spear mm -hmm. in terms of data for new builds yeah. here in Las Vegas. Um. What's some of the stuff you've been sharing lately? What are you seeing right now? What's going on? You know, I, I'm i lucky I work for a builder because I think we see the market shift first. And I think the reason for that is because builders 
look, it's just about the bottom line, the the profit margins, hitting the numbers. There's no emotional attachment. Um, They need to make the deal, period, end of story. So they're going to do what it takes to make the deal. Okay, they're going to price adjust first. They're going to do a drastic price adjustment. You're not going to see a $5,000 price adjustment with a builder. You're going to see twenty, thirty, forty thousand. dollars $40,000. you are going to see incentives. Uh, so we're seeing it pick back up. I say it's totally balancing out right now. And if you are a regular residential agent, give it a month. You'll see it too if you haven't seen it yet. Do you think you just, it, that's, that's the lag is what you're seeing is 30 days from new build to resale? Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah, when when it got crazy, um, I, I agents thought they could come to builders almost as it being like a little sneak. Oh, it's a different market. It's the same market. It's the same market. So they thought they were going to come to us and they would get mad at us. What do you mean there's bids on new builds? What do you mean there's wait lists? We got that for the first couple months and then they all caught on to it and was like, oh, nope, it's the same market. So we just, we see it first. What are some things, if I'm a new agent Mm -hmm. and I have a client looking at a new build with you, Mm -hmm. what are some things I should be doing to make the transaction, to make the entire process just unicorns jumping through rainbows and harmonious. Yeah. You know, um, new builds are a learning experience. I'll never forget the conversation I had with an agent who said she was doing it for 10 years and she never did a new build. But it was the best thing she did by being honest with me. So number one, register your clients, okay? Do the paperwork, keep your copy, put it in your file. You should always have a file. Protect yourself. Um, attend the contract signing. There's a lot to learn in the contract signing with a new build. Ask questions about it, okay? Don't just sit there. Don't play on your phone. I've seen that. Don't play on your phone during your while your client is signing their life away, please. Attend the walkthroughs. There's a pre-drywall orientation with most builders. Attend it. There's a lot for you to learn as an agent just by being there. Attend the final walkthrough. Attend the signing appointment. Touch base with the new home agent every now and then just to check in, touch base with your clients. Do not just drop them off at a sales office and then disappear when the house is done and go, okay, where's my check? I've seen that too. It is kind of the basics, you know, with sales to be attentive and be Mm -hmm. in front of somebody. And real estate agents are getting paid a lot of money Mm -hmm. per transaction. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, for residential resale transaction, you're looking at like seven grand commission. Um, what is it for for new build? You know what it is, what the average like resi resale agent gets? It depends on on the builder. Um, probably anywhere from two to three percent of the base price. Okay, which is that's good money. It is. That's good money. What's it your is. what's your you, what's your average base price? Ooh, let's go with four hundred. Okay, that's good money. Mm-hmm. That's really good money for somebody. And with a residential real estate agent. I think that there's the assumption when they're going into a new build that they're going to do even less than they're supposed to do, Mm -hmm. that you're going to do it all and that all they need to do is get, you know, whatever documentation signed so that they're legally recognized and representing that buyer. Mm -hmm. And then they just walk away and that's it. Where really that's, that's not how it should be. It's not how it should be. Should be. Correct. The key term. It's it's more of being present, Mm -hmm. turn your phone off, Mm -hmm. don't have your phone even with you or present. Mm-hmm. when you're there uh, you know, at, at your offices yeah, and to be asking. I love the fact that it's like, ask questions. The, the dumbest question is the one you don't ask. Correct. And I don't care if you've been in business for 30 years and your license number is S.00000004. Yeah. There's still stuff you could be learning every day from everyone in all walks of life. And if you're not asking questions, you're doing yourself a great disservice. You are. You are. And the thing is to ask questions, not make assumptions. Too. I, I've seen that mistake too. And there's nothing worse than you're, you're coming in, you have a client and you're, you're talking to your client, like, you know, everything, right? And now what do I have to do? I have to correct you in front of your client. I don't want to look like you're giving your client the wrong information, but I have a job to do for my seller, which is give you the correct information. So there's a few key questions. I tell people, I'm like, look, ask these questions when you go in, Or even get the information beforehand. That impresses me more when you've done your research as an agent. So that way you just walk in with your client and go, oh, this is Amanda. We have an appointment with her. Bill time is this. HOA is this. Here's your base price. You were more interested in two to three bedrooms, right? Okay, great. Let's go take a look. You as an agent look like a stud in front of your clients when you do that. You do. Right? When when you are 
like reaching out to you ahead of time mm -hmm. and talking with you and saying, all right, what do I need to know? What are the particulars? You know, what are the benchmarks mm -hmm. that I can go back to my clients and talk to them about? And what you're f happy to do. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is that what you do, there's no, like, it's not adversarial no. at all. You're more like, hey, we're a multi-billion dollar company and we're going to be here for a while. And so let's make this a harmonious uh, transaction. Yes. Right? Yes. The, the, and I think more agents need to look at it that way. The, the ones that are good do. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. the, the ones that look at real estate as it's an art form and they wake up unemployed every single day mm -hmm. and you're only as good as your last your last closing, your last transaction. Yeah. That's it. And just because it's a new build, you should be working just as hard mm -hmm. to be staying in front of these people and be attentive and listen to what they need. Answer what you know you can answer, but then lean on you. Mm -hmm. you you're the new build professional. Mm -hmm. You have years of experience. You've done a boatload of transactions. Hello. Yeah. You know, and do you have agents picking your brain about data? Because you've got a big old brain, man, and it's good. <laughs> was, um, yeah. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I've noticed it's more the brokers I know. They're the ones who are more interested in the information. Because they they want it to help grow their teams. Um, your regular agent doesn't really think twice to ask me for information. I'm always happy to share it. As you know, I, I do talk on my social media sometimes about what I'm seeing. And I give the data out there. What people do with it is up to them. I love that you put stuff out there like that. I don't know mm -hmm. anyone else that's doing that in your sector. Yeah. Like, that's killer stuff. But, you know, I've actually built relationships doing that. Have with agents really? I've never met. Let's talk about that. I, I've literally just, you know... I, my social media is private, uh, but if there's agents that I see are doing a lot of transactions, I'll I'll give them a follow, send them a message. Yeah, I'm marketing myself to the agent, not to the buyer. That's the difference, but I'm still marketing myself. And I've had people walk into my sales office because of it. And I've done deals because of it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Social media is a beautiful thing. Who who are some of your favorite, we can mention names. Who are some of your favorite, because it's positive, your, your favorite <laughs> agents in town. Uh, who are some of your favorite agents in town that you that you just, when you know they're coming in or mm -hmm. they're calling you, it's just your your heart just starts to beat faster. You're happy. Ooh, you know, um, Matt Jimerson is one. He works for Huntington and Ellis. We've done a couple deals together. In fact, Matt is very one of those agents that's very loyal to me. He'll even tell people, if you want to go to XYZ Builder, you need to go see Amanda. Uh, I, in fact, have returned that loyalty to him. One of my friends need to list their house for sale. So as far as I look at it, Matt has put, you know, food on my table at one point. So I'm going to put food back on his table. Uh, and he listed their house and, you know, they're in escrow and have an offer and everything. And within three weeks in this market. So Matt's a great guy. Matt's great. I know yeah. Matt. Great guy. Yeah. Matt's great. Um, I have Lori Norman as well. So she's fantastic. If anything, we probably could talk too much because we love each other so much because we are such a team when we work together. So we're about to close on a difficult transaction. and But her and I were arm in arm the whole way through. And that's why it's closing. Where's she at? Oh, I don't know. All right. I have to look. No oh, biggie. She's good though. But it, it, that makes your job so much easier when you have people like that getting mm -hmm. a hold of you. It does. Right. Um, not leaving names out, what are the mm -hmm. biggest pain points or not pain points, but challenges that you see that agents are doing uh, when, when they're coming to you that are impeding the process or just not helping them grow their brand and leveraging? Um, you know, one of my biggest, biggest things that I see agents do, which is not my favorite, is when they don't want their client to apply with the in-house lender. And here's my reasoning for that, okay? so. Your duty is to your client and getting them the best deal. If you are not letting them apply and see and actually compare who's giving them the better the deal, are you really looking out for your client? Maybe it is the realtor or the lender that you know. Maybe it is. Go with them. But now you know and you've cemented that. The ones who want to stick with their buddy and all that stuff. I'm like, I don't think you're actually doing right by your client. I, I think you should always with... <sighs> It's such a massive purchase. Mm -hmm. This is hundreds of thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. right? And if you're not talking to at least two to three lenders, you're bananas. Right. You're, you are, again, leaving tens of thousands of dollars on the table, possibly, yeah. in interest. Yeah. That you're paying over the life of you, you know, paying on that mortgage. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. 
And and the way I see it is is if this is my client, right? Because I did resale before, um, and I I bring them in and I set them up with the lender they're pre approved with. I can go, yeah, let's let's get pre approved with the builder's lender too, and let's compare. And if the builder's offering the better deal, then great. I made the suggestion. If my guy's offering the better deal, great. I'm the one who did the introduction. Either way, you look good. What gets you out of bed every morning, work wise? Work wise. Work wise. We'll talk about personal stuff later. Don't worry. We have plenty. We have plenty of time. We'll, we'll get into that. Well, we do have yeah. plenty of time. Yeah. Um, it's definitely the day I get to give certain people keys. It feels so good. If anything, I have gone to work in my my sweatpants just to give keys. I'll be out running errands, and I'm like, I have to be the one to hand them to you. I'm so sorry. I got emotionally attached to this person. I do. There were some people yesterday I didn't get to give them. I was so sad because they're incredible. But they got their keys, so that's what mattered. It wasn't my moment. It was theirs. Well said. Well said, my dear. Because it, it is, it's it's their moment. Mm -hmm. in, in residential real estate, it's their moment. Yes. It's not yours. It's not mine in Tyler and Escrow. It's not any other agents. No. It's that person. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that gets overlooked is we are in a transactional business, mm -hmm. but you cannot treat it as a transactional business. Right. As soon as you stop treating it like a transactional business, you will, you're breathing rarefied air. Yeah. Uh, that's just, that's just how it is. Uh, and that, especially in Vegas, everyone's trying to sell you something. Oh yeah. You know, you're born and raised. Oh, born and raised. Born and raised. Mm -hmm. So you've been here your whole life. You've seen it. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, you've seen how we've grown. I mean, I've been here over 10 years, but just the exponential growth we've seen. Oh, I know. Is crazy. And the California, you mm -hmm. know, uh, migration coming in. Are, are you seeing a lot of California people coming in? to your office not right now i'm actually noticing the people that are coming in are are the ones who stopped looking over the past two years but wanted to be homeowners and have realized it you know the world didn't end in real estate and they still want to be homeowners so we're getting a lot of that first-time buyers i do have a couple californians you'll always get a couple californians but right now it's the people who were on the sidelines over the past year or two that are coming back around that's interesting mm -hmm. folks that are here right now mm -hmm. renting Mm -hmm. So they're renters and COVID scared them. COVID, the market, rates, whatever. Yes, they're the ones who just drove by or just looked online and said, you know what, let me just go see the houses. And next thing you know, you're giving them keys. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It's so wonderful. Are they represented, unrepresented by another agent? Mm -hmm. So um, data, right? So That's why I'm asking, man. That's so why. I, I love this question. So... We, we get annual reviews, so I know my percentage of agents that I have on my transactions every year. Um, mine is was about 35% last year had agents. The rest did not. Wow. So, yes, people are walking in. And the biggest mistake I think that agents make is when they say, don't go to a builder without me. Otherwise, I can't negotiate for you. Otherwise, I can't um, represent you. Stop saying I. You can't do this, okay? What about the client? What's best for them? So I like to say, build relationships with new home agents and say, if you want to go to a builder, I have wonderful relationships with Amanda at XYZ Builder. I know the exact process ins and outs. I have a wonderful relationship. I'd love to introduce you because now you have that relationship that you can give to this person. Can a residential real estate agent negotiate price for a new build? Yes and no. If the builder wants to get rid of the home, sure. If it's just been sitting on the market, make an offer. Absolutely. Otherwise, maybe not. I am a big believer and it doesn't hurt to ask. Oh, you can always, you can you, always ask. Oh, you can always ask. I mean, mm -hmm. no, you, you just get comfortable you know, with hearing no. Right. right. And that's it. But so you're saying 65% of everybody coming in your door, give or take, mm -hmm. unrepresented. Yes. That's bananas. Here's the other half of that. Okay. Right. Because I did resale. So I... I was always curious. So I don't ask so much anymore, but my first year or two of doing new builds, once I gave them the keys and I built that relationship, I asked them, hey, why didn't you use an agent? I just, I'm just i just curious. And you get kind of a couple different answers, but there were a few repeat ones, which I know you want to hear, right? I do. So I do. Um, the first one is simple. I didn't know I could. Okay, whatever. Let's that one go. Uh, the next one. I had a bad experience. I will never use an agent again. Mm, mm, mm. 
And that's a hot topic for you and I, because you and I have talked about um, quality of agents. Ad nauseum. Yes. 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 It's it's so important. So, you know, these offices that hire agents who do one or two transactions a year and aren't that great and they're just happy to take their cut. I promise you, you're also losing money because of that agent. Puppy mills. Yes. The, the, the brokerages that are just puppy mills and yeah. look at the agents as someone that they're going to get one to three deals from friends and family from that agent mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make money because they're hiring three to 400 of these people. Mm -hmm. And they saturate the market and they're not trained properly mm -hmm. because they're looked at as just a number mm -hmm. that's filling a seat. And that's it. And the brokerages that are excelling right now are diving deep into training. Yeah. Deep into a strong corporate culture. Yeah, as they should. I love yeah, it. Yeah. And I, I love it as well because yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a giant push by a lot of boutique, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one-off uh, brokerages here in town that are doubling down on corporate culture yeah. and doubling down on training their agents to represent uh, you know, their clients in a respectful way mm -hmm. to listen to them is I love sitting back and, and going to sales meetings at offices and you hear that yeah, is great where it's not just screw them over and turn and burn. And it was, I've, I've been in those meetings that you have as well. And yeah. you're just like, Oh, kill me now. Kill me now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and when you see that now though, I I'm, I'm happy. And I think a lot of that is because of COVID and we had COVID and then everybody who was serving bottle service on the strip, all of a sudden got their real estate license because mm -hmm. they figured I can have not work from 11 o'clock until five in the morning and make even more money mm -hmm. is what happened. So this influx of agents came in that were all 20 somethings and drop dead gorgeous men and men and women. Mm -hmm. Well, now all of a sudden, it started in April of last year when, when rates went up, it's, oh, I now have to work for a living. Yeah, I can't just stand out in front of my, my listing in a monkey suit with a, you know, empty mm -hmm. contract and someone's going to drive by and sign it. Now people have to get to work and they have, they have to work on their tools and their systems and what they're doing to be a better realtor and be a better fiduciary for their clients. Yeah. Right. And that's what I'm seeing now. And I love that. Yeah. But I still cringe when I hear of like people going to meet with you with their client and they're on their phone mm -hmm. or they're not even there. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff that drives me insane where, and you're good because we've had these talks. You're so good that if you think someone is really not doing well at their job, you reach out to the broker and give them, it is completely out of respect, mm -hmm. but it's done in a way that is so good long-term for your brand, mm -hmm. because I guarantee you that broker will never forget you in a positive way. I've only they done that twice, you. but um, but both times were because the, the buyers told me, I want to fire my agent and said, please don't speak to her anymore. And here, here's the thing. If you believe in representation, you have the right to representation. So if you feel like you're not getting that, you deserve it. And yeah, and the last one, because I asked her, I was like, do you know this broker? Um, and, and I had a conversation and that deal ended up falling through and it was 100% because the agent did not take care of their clients. They just walked away from the house and the deposit and they went with another agent and bought a resale home. And if you look at that level of neglect, Mm -hmm. For someone to be, and that, that's tra that's trauma. It's awful. If you think about it. And <clears throat> if you are experiencing that level of trauma to walk away from that amount of money and all the time involved and, and the emotional attachment that you have to the home already yes. to say that this agent is doing such a disservice to this process, we're out working with that person, we're out with, at, 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 for that home, yeah. everything. That's bad. That And luckily, it's only been twice- Five years? Four years with new build. So, okay. yeah. So four years, twice in four years, that's pretty good. Yeah, where they felt also comfortable, though, with me to tell me. Which is also huge because how many times do you think that's happened? They don't say a word. Right. A lot more. Yeah, people keep quiet. Yeah. It's, they do. It's hard because we're, people are afraid they're going to offend somebody, mm -hmm. especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, you're afraid you're going to offend somebody and then they're not going to you know, be happy and they're going to go home and cry. And it's, it's horrible to have bad feelings and yeah. kill me now, please. Just. You get better, you evolve by getting constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. I would much rather have somebody you give me a, a two-star review, a three-star review on Google and say, Jeff, you didn't do a good job doing this, this, and this. 
thank you. Mm -hmm. That's stuff that I will try to work on to become better. Yeah. Instead of, oh, you're great, unicorn jumping through rainbows and yeah. you know, everything's fantastic and you're the best ever. That does nothing to help me. If, if you think you can't grow, then you are so far behind. Yeah. We all have room to grow. Yeah. I, if you look at me, my first year in real estate or my first year with a builder and we did a transaction together, I am not the same person, good or bad. I am not the same because of how much I have learned over the years. So you just become immersed in it and you get more reps. It's like going to the gym. Yeah. You, you can't go to the gym one time and expect yeah. to have a well-defined body. It takes you can't. months. You can't. I'm sorry. I know. I, if that's a news flash. I apologize. But that's how it is. It takes years mm. of dedication. And it's not just working out. It's, you know, watching what you eat and doing your macros or whatever that mm. crap people do. Bless Mike Rowland is a machine with that stuff. Bless his heart. That guy has the body fat of an Olympic swimmer right now. Because oh, good for macros. Him. I'm like, good for you, Mike. I can't do it. I'm, you know, yeah. no, I, I'd rather enjoy edibles and eating things at night and having a great time. It's awesome. Um, but I think people need to create, you know, a sense of professionalism with their brand. And when they're in work mode, mm -hmm. they have to first love what they do. Mm -hmm. If you're a realtor, you're, you're getting beat up every day. You just are. Yeah. You're either getting no's because you're circle prospecting, you're door knocking, open houses, no one's showing up, all that. But you've got to have that fire in your belly mm -hmm. to continue. And it you you can read people well. You know when the, you know from first point of contact. Yeah. Whether or not they're the real deal or not in terms of agents. Yeah. Right. In your experience, what percentage are you seeing that are good versus the ones that are challenged? I don't know if I have a percentage. Um, I think most of them are good, whether or not they're good because they're experienced or they're good because they're actually trying is different. The number one thing you can do though, is try, make the effort, put it out there. The ones who just sit back and do nothing. Oh, why? What a great, why? What, what a great point, Mana, because if you, if you don't try, mm -hmm. you have no sense of whether you're going to accomplish anything. And if you have a fear of failure, and if that overwhelms you so that you're not going to try, you are dead as a real estate agent. Yeah. You're dead. You have to be able to fail forward as a realtor. Yes. Every single day, it's going to happen, and you have to be comfortable with failing forward. Oh, yeah. It, it's just that simple. And I, I'm, I'm boggles my mind, my dear. It boggles my freaking mind when people just want to play it safe. And just kind of do the bare minimum and do their thing. And then they're going to make 50 grand a year, mm -hmm. maybe, and, and wonder why they're not making more money. Right. Where it comes down to, first of all, if you're driven by money, you're not going to be a good realtor. Uh, if you are instead driven by helping people out with the most stressful, biggest financial transaction of their life mm -hmm. and helping that to be the most harmonious, you know, thing in their, in their world, you will make more money than you've ever seen in your entire life. Yeah. Ever. Uh, but it's so hard to convince people of that sometimes because of, and I've talked about this where, you know, people will post stuff on Instagram, you know, Hey, here I am with my new BMW, my new Tesla. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they're making payments on that thing. I remember I met with a guy, this was years ago at a very well-respected office here in town. He had a $1,500 a month car payment and was renting. And mm -hmm. I asked him and I said, what are you doing? And he said, I have an image I've got to live up to because of the office that I'm at. And, be, and I'm like, let me tell you something right now. I know your broker really well. Mm -hmm. He doesn't give a rip about what you're driving. Yeah. Because uh, uh, long term, you're putting more pressure on yourself to make that car payment mm -hmm. than anything else. Uh, what? Right. And that happens more than people know. It, it's the perception. And that's where social media gets skewed is you see people that are luxury broker opens or driving a nice car mm -hmm. or wearing amazing clothes or they've got a cool watch, but they're doing no business. Right. And I hate the term fake it till you make it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And mm -hmm. I will discuss that with anybody. But I think that again, given the gravity of what you do as a realtor, mm -hmm. this is new build or resi resale. Yeah. If you are not completely and openly honest with these folks, Eventually, they're going to see right through it. Yes. And you're dead. Oh, yeah. You are. It is fatal to your brand, especially here in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Like we said, even like my, my dentist tries to upsell me 
when I go in. And Mine I, does too. Right? And, 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 yeah. and, but we're, we're used to it, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're used to it. And so in, especially here in Vegas, I think you assume someone's trying to sell you something until they've earned the rights that they're not mm-hmm. or that you're comfortable with them as a person that it's okay if they sell you, mm-hmm. right? And that takes time. And most people don't want to put that kind of time in mm-hmm. and that kind of effort. Um, Cause you're amazing at that. You long play everything because you're a relationship girl. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, be- but I believe in the value of relationships, whether it be professional or personal, I believe in the value of that. You're, you're good with that. So you are, you are so good with Those that. Those are like core values of Amanda. Well, so yeah. Hello. So yeah. being in, you're born and raised here. Mm-hmm. What are some things about Vegas that you absolutely love? So the thing I say about Vegas is there's room for everyone. Uh, it you can do whatever you want for a living here. You can be whoever you want, whatever your interests are, however you dress. There is room for you here, and that is the beautiful thing about living in Las Vegas. Some people may not like it because they're this person and they don't want to see the complete opposite walking down the street. Forget those people. Be whoever you want to be here, and I think that is a beautiful thing. That's awesome. I love it. I've never heard that before. That's really good. But it's so true. It's so true. And you know what's crazy is I've also sold houses to people who said, you know, maybe maybe they dress a little different than I do, but they've walked into other builders and they say people weren't nice to me when I walked in there just because of the way they were dressed or because they had, you know, purple hair. So what? And, and especially in this town? Right. In, in this town, you have no idea who has money. You have no idea. And usually it's the person that's not showing it mm-hmm. has several zeros you know, after a number in their checking account mm-hmm. or in their savings account. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when when you have to show proof of funds and they're pulling up in a beat up F-150, mm-hmm. you know, wearing Carhartt bib overalls. Yeah. And next thing you know, they have multi-million dollars. Right? But that's Vegas. Yeah. That's one of the coolest parts about here mm-hmm. is the economic diversity. Yeah. I think most of the people that have it don't show it. And most of the people that don't have it act like they have it. Yeah. That's a big thing. That's a big, big one, it especially is. if you're single and you're dating in town. Gosh, don't I know it? Why? What? What do you mean? Oh, well, I I recently re-downloaded a dating app, and let me tell you, it's mostly just nope. You look full of yourself. Nope. 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 Oh, you look like a nice guy, but the ones who are flexing their abs and you know leaning against the car, and I love the the posing against the car on the cell phone. Because they're so important. They still do that? They still do that. 1987. Stop doing that. 1987 just called and went, huh? To each their own. There's some girls who are going to go crazy for that. What are some automatic swipe lefts? Automatic swipe lefts. Automatic swipe left. Ooh. Abs? You can have one ab photo. Gym, gym I'll, pick? I'll let you have one. Ab or gym. It doesn't what, matter. But what one. like your main profile pick? You need to look wholesome. Okay. You need to look like a nice guy. Guy with a fish? You know, that that's the big joke, right? They can have a fish. I don't care. If, if it's nothing but fish, I have a problem. So fish is okay. One fish. One fish, not multiple. Yeah. One, okay. one, one that shows your body. So whether it's the gym or apps, just one. Um, Next to a car. That's a no. Inle- you, unless you it's hesitated. like maybe that's your career. No. I don't see the point. Okay. Because it's then it's a look at my money situation. Do any guys uh, pose with animals, like with a dog or with a cat or anything like that? Uh, oh, yeah. I have, I mean, look, I'm a dog lover, so I don't, I don't care. I have a picture of my dog on there. So, so here, here's my, here's my swipe. Let's hear it. Here's my swipe lefts. Mm-hmm. Sunglasses. Okay. That's a big one. Just any sunglasses. Any sunglasses. If I can't see your eyes, your eyes are the window to your soul. Yes. And if you're wearing sunglasses, and I mean, I'm looking for a relationship with somebody, mm-hmm. and being a single guy, if I can't see you, left. But I'm what if what left. if they have one sunglass picture at the bottom, but the rest you can see their eyes? Fine. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's how I'm with like the app situation. Fine. Yeah. That's, okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but, but that's one. Also, uh, doing... Uh, Warrior pose on a bluff somewhere at Red Rock or the north rim of the Grand Canyon. I get it. You, you work out. Those? Oh, God. I haven't oh, seen those. It's the bluff picture or they're climbing and looking down. 
at you. Is it a butt shot? Because they're climbing kind of a butt shot, mm-hmm. but it's more of a look at me. I'm I'm scaling this 50 foot sheer like rock face. Okay. That's a good one. And then the other one is they're in like a slot canyon and they're like holding on right here and looking up going and smiling. Mm. And I'm going, oh, really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Or cats. I'm just not a cat person. Neither am I. I just not wasn't going to say it. Yeah. No, no. I'll, I'll go there. It's automatic I, swipe left. I, I am not a cat guy. And if there's a picture with you and a cat, I'm swiping left. And you could be the nicest girl on, on the planet, but I'm out. Yeah. I'm out because they smell. Cats have an agenda. A cat will let you pet them, pet them and then in, in a split second, biting you and clawing your eyes out. Mm-hmm. A dog just wants, you have to feed it. Mm-hmm. You have to rub its belly, mm-hmm. love on it. And take it out to go potty, mm-hmm. and it will love you every single day for the rest of its life. It will mm-hmm. love you unconditionally. Yeah, my dog is very excited when I walk through the door. Well, of course. It's the greatest moment of her life every day. As that she feels should. good. Right? A cat's That's, not going to do that for you. A cat's going to tell you to suck it. Yeah. A cat you can't doesn't even find care. the cat. No, the, no the, the cat's under the bed. Yeah. Contemplating when it's going to scratch you. Like it's, cats have an agenda, so mm-hmm. yeah, I am uh, any anyone that has that. Um, also, oh, here's another good one. It's a their main profile picture on the dating app is with a bunch of other people. Yeah, Drives which one me are you? Nuts. Dri- and I, I've had it to where I've, and then I'm like, oh god, okay, wh- who is this person? Second picture, people. Third picture, people. Then fourth picture, finally it's that person. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wh- what? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Yeah, that tells me that you're hoping one of your attractive friends exactly right. will reel is, me yeah. in. Well, and that's what it is mm-hmm. because it, it is somebody that to me just, I, she's not attractive. Mm-hmm. And so she's trying to hide it. It's Instead never of, the hot one. But own it. Oh, the, the, it's please. never the hottest one in the Listen, photo. Let me tell you something. It is. The blonde with the leggy thigh gap is, she's right there, man. She's right there mm-hmm. with every angle and it's done up and here I am mm-hmm. and I'm single and let's roll. Mm-hmm. Done. Mm-hmm. But yeah, th- that's a biggie too is... Like three or four people in the photo. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. what? What are you doing? Yeah, I think you're allowed like one group photo to show you have friends, but not the main photo. None of my and photos not, are with people. And I don't even, rem- I don't know if I do. Nobody. I don't really know if I do. I can't. I, 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 I haven't can't really been it. paying attention yeah. to mine. Well, I'm on it, but it, it's easier for girls. Mm, Much easier for girls mm, and guys. Different intentions with guys. That's true. I mean, but, hey, I've I've dated because like when I travel, it's nice to go out like for dinner with somebody. So I, yeah. I'm in Florida all the time, and I'll meet people there and go out for drinks, go out for dinner, and they'll say there. It's like I, I, I go to Tampa a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot of ladies there that I've I've talked to have said it's a very shallow pool to draw from because in you know the inland, the Gulf yeah. Coast, Tampa area, you've got a bunch of angry men with MAGA. Flags and which is, I mean, that's fine. I don't. Right. You vote for whoever you want to, but we're driving your dually F three fifty with a you know diesel yeah. and listening to Kid Rock. Uh, you know, that's that's the pool of which they have to. And a lot, it's a lot of women there. Again, I'm a data guy. Mm-hmm. It's women from the Midwest that have relocated for one reason or another to Tampa, St. Pete, which is beautiful. Mm-hmm. These women are gorgeous. They're smart. They're successful. They're good at their job, and they're looking for someone they're equal. Yeah. to be their partner. Yeah. And the ones they have to choose from are like the serial daters or the ones that are, you know, off to a country and Western concert with their cut off jean jacket mm-hmm. on and just got another Confederate flag tattoo on their right bicep. Yay. Good for you, sir. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Yeah. And you'll, I hope you meet your e- eternal companion of the way you present yourself. I, I, there's someone for everyone. Chicken but... for every pot, my dear. Agreed. Yes. But dating here in Vegas, and it's funny, a lot, almost everyone I talk to that's single here is like, dating here sucks or dating here is hard. I, I think it's, I've had a blast. Have you? Oh, yeah. I, I'm single for two years. I've had three or four nightmare dates, mm-hmm. nightmare dates. Uh, but beyond that, no, it's been yeah. great. And the funny part is that because I'm in real estate, but I'm not a realtor, mm-hmm. we stay friends because almost all of them, hey, I'm looking to sell my house. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm looking to buy a house. And yeah. so I pull data for them on a home they're looking at. I get them the contact information sometimes, you know, the address of the place and equity they have in the home and all that for, for them to do whatever they want with. And so they, they keep me close. It's hysterical. Yeah. That happens like once or twice a month. I'll get a phone call or a text from somebody. We just stay friends. That's so funny. Well, but it's like you said before, it's relationships. Yes. Right. And I'm a firm believer of just because we went out on a date and there wasn't 
any type of physical chemistry. Mm-hmm. Well, we were still friends before that. There was still some stuff that we had, of, you know, commonality. Yeah. We can still have that. That's yeah. okay. That's healthy, actually. Um, and then my biggest, like, move that I will do, first of all, I'm a traditional guy. So, like, I hold the door mm-hmm. and do all that and pull the seat back for the lady. Like, when we go out to eat or go out for drinks. But if she has younger kids, I pay for the babysitter. Really? I do. Oh, I don't have kids, but I love yeah. that. I offer to pay. I had a single mom, so I love that. I offer to pay for the babysitter. Mm-hmm. I also offer, I always offer to pick her up at her place. And mm-hmm. she's like, no, not yet, not there. I always offer it though. Mm-hmm. And I always say, would you like me to cover your Uber? And I cover the Uber, if they're going to Uber. I love it. And I do that just to be respectful. This uh, should be a date, like a dating podcast. I like, know. Teach some classes. Well, what I do with, with this stuff is just, we talk about everything. I know. Uh, you know, I talk about everything that my guest wants to talk about and whatever they feel, con- it's all about consent. Yeah. Uh, it's know, a conversation. It's just a conversation. Mm-hmm. And there's times I brought stuff up and people are like, ah, I'm not cool with that. Okay. Then let's, you know, what are you cool talking about? Yeah. And, and let's talk about that because everyone has their own fingerprint and there's 2 million people here in town. And everyone's different in one way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. And so it's having these conversations with just with my friends. Yeah. And But the same conversation we're having right now, we could be having at Mothership Coffee. We could be. It's literally the same conversation we're having. So there's nothing Pretty different much. except that we have cameras and microphones. Yeah. And that's it. And it's super cool, though, because now you have a chance to take this and share it to whomever you want to. Mm-hmm. To say, here's me. Yeah. And here's a recording of, here's 20 seconds of something I said that I thought was pretty cool. And I want to share it with you. Mm -hmm. That's social media. And that's a direction everything is going now. Everything is. Is this long tail, long form content to Mm -hmm. sit and chat with somebody for an hour. And the production level is really good. Yeah. You know, level nine studios is, I'll give me a shout out, uh, is (laughs) phenomenal. Um, Scott's the man. And so it's doing that and then taking these little snippets afterwards. Mm -hmm. And every day. Your goal is every day something. dropping something. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times this stuff, I don't think is that great, does the best. It's always that way. Right? You never know what's going to pick up. It's a nugget of information. You're never going to figure out the algorithm on any social media platform. You're just not going to. The people that work at TikTok don't know the algorithms. Right. Like some people know a little bit. They have stuff separated. Mm-hmm. So no one knows. Because then that person go on their own and, you know, teach everybody how to do it. But you get an idea of what works and what doesn't work, but then they're constantly changing the algorithms around. But I think it's evergreen content is Mm -hmm. to do stuff like this and to be having intimate conversations with people that are respectful and consensual, Mm -hmm. but you're talking about cool stuff. And we're a global destination. Everyone wants to know about Vegas. We are, yeah. You can go to the, talk to a Sherpa in Nepal and mention Vegas. Ah, oh, yeah, Vegas. Like, he's going to know Vegas. They do. Right? They do. going to know Vegas. I mean, that's how, when I was doing Periscope videos mm-hmm. eight years ago, mm-hmm. and I'd go on, and I was having thousands of people coming on my live streams, mm-hmm. walking through homes, because I would do a hashtag, Vegas, Las Vegas, Las Vegas real estate. Yeah. And then people are coming on from all over the freaking world, Amanda. They're just curious. They're just curious about, like, biggest misnomer that we both know, mm-hmm. you don't live on the Strip. Now, you can. There's Mm -hmm. wonderful luxury high-rises that are Mm -hmm. there. If you want to do that, that can be your jam. But 95, 98% of us do not live on the Strip. No. And there are wonderful communities surrounding the Strip where you can eat, live, work, play. And what makes us different than any other city on the planet is, yeah, when you go into 7-Eleven or, uh, you know, Smith's, there are slot machines there. I know. There's slots there. Well, there's a bar inside my Smith's. Is there really? There is. A bar? There's a bar. Where is it? I live in Sky Canyon. So okay. I live as far as possible from the Strip. Um, but I, it's right off the freeway. I could get there in 20, 30 minutes. Or I can stay in my nice little hole in the city. Your Smith's has a bar. It has a bar. It's a wine and beer bar. It's wonderful. I love that. Yeah. Smith's Marketplace. Do they have like they have happy tri- hour specials? And- they have trivia every Wednesday. <gasps> Do you go? I've been twice. I'm terrible at trivia, but that's, you know, you see good people and you meet, you meet your neighbors. I love that. I didn't know that. I've gone there and just had a glass of wine while I'm making my grocery list. Oh. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's so, it's so random. It's so Vegas too. But I, but I love it because you just get to walk away from the house, kind of check in, have some nice conversations with people that live 
right around the corner. How cool is that? It's great. Right? I mean, how cool is that? There, there is a strong sense of community here in Las Vegas. There is. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's because we're such a transient community. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the average person here is like maybe four years. Yeah, Three probably. or four years is how long they stay. For one reason or another, they burn out. Most mm-hmm. people think they're going to move here and make a billion dollars. No, you're going to work as hard or harder. But yeah, there's many opportunities here to do yeah. very well financially. But how many times have you become friends with somebody in your years of living here and, oh, they're, they're gone. They go to Boise or, yeah. you know, New York or whatever. They're, they're out of here because they can't, one reason or another, mm-hmm. but they, they leave here. That happens a lot here. I think people move here to chase a lifestyle. Mm. And, what and, what, what and so it's, you know, the Vegas lifestyle. I'm going to move to Vegas and yeah, I'm going to have a regular nine to five, but I'm going to go party every week and I'm going to go do this. And that's really not what it is for us locals. Not really. You can, you can go to the club. You can go have fun. It is fun. Go once or twice a year. Have your fun. That's not every weekend. Not unless you are truly in the nightlife industry. Is that every weekend for you? And people think they're going to have this certain life and lifestyle when they move here. And then I've, I've seen those people and they get really sad and lonely. Really? Mm-hmm. How come? I think it's because not, it's not what they expected. And they just think that everyone's going to be welcoming you in and, oh, we're going to go have fun this weekend. And so what are you doing this weekend? I'm going home to my family. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I... <sighs> I've met those people, so many of them, because those are the people, if I meet them through work um, or it's, you know, friend of a friend, I'm, I'll be the one to go, hey, you know, what? why don't you come over for Easter dinner? And they're so excited. They are. They're so excited because someone was nice to them and they have something to do. I love that. But yeah, I see it all the time where people do, they they get burnt out because they're expecting a certain life here. And it's those of us that live here are just living regular lives. And I love my life. It is. I, I love it here. Mm-hmm. That's the one question I get asked the most from people outside of Vegas is, how do you like Vegas? I love it. Love it. Uh, when I moved here 10 years ago, I liked it. But now I love it here. Yeah. This town's been great to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there's no greater place where you can build a brand faster mm-hmm. than Las Vegas. If you find your niche and you do it right, mm-hmm. there's nowhere else in the world you can build your brand faster than Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Because we're such a glitzy entertainment, uh, you know, destination. Mm-hmm. We're it. Now, like, we're getting a baseball team. We're going to get a, a basketball team, which is mm-hmm. bananas. I remember back years ago, they wouldn't even have any of that sports stuff here because they're afraid that gamblers and they would get, you know, yeah. sway the gambling. No. Yeah. No. Because, and, and then in comes, you know, Bill Foley with the Golden Knights. And next thing you know, yeah, it's, you know, game on, man. Yeah. Which, uh, which hats off to Bill Foley for, oh. for starting it because there's been conversations for years, again, born and raised here. And he, he went all in and everyone and their mother is following suit. And you go to a Knights game and they're packed. They're packed. Those they're games so are, fun. and they're fun. They're a blast. I'm somebody, because full disclosure, Bill Foley is the chairman of the board of Foley National Title, which is my company. Okay. So he's my boss's 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 boss. Never met the guy, but everyone I've talked to has said, he's amazing. He's yeah. approachable. He's super cool. And you go to those Knights games. Mm-hmm. And I started to go now so I can get free tickets because I we own we own the team. Mm-hmm. It's a blast. So much fun. It's a blast. I've gone with my my daughter, my 13-year-old daughter, Alex, mm-hmm. and she loves it. We have it now down to a science with food. Mm-hmm. We get there. We go right to, um, oh, what's the barbecue place? Um, oh, I can't remember it now. They're mm-hmm. down. They're, they're, they, they, they're used to be on Highland, and now they're over uh, where the pawn shop place is. Um, but they, you go there and you get like pork over French fries, like barbecued mm-hmm. pork with the beans and yeah. the sauce and all that. And I think it's rolling smoke. I think it's what it is. And that's, that's like beginning of first period. We do that. Mm-hmm. And then, um, second period, we'll get the giant like Bavarian pretzel okay. with the cheese. Mm-hmm. That's the second move. Mm-hmm. And then finally you go to Freed's is there. And we'll get cannolis and a little box of the like Italian cookies. I get the donuts. Oh, the donuts are crazy good. The donuts are legit. They're, their donuts are legit. You walk by them and you smell them and yeah. there's a line. Yeah. yeah. A line Which at a night's game for donuts. Brilliant. It it's is. It's brilliant it is. what they do. And my, my, you know, my, my thing with my daughter is like, we love to eat. Mm-hmm. You know, like we do sushi together and all that. She's 13 and has a defined, refined palate and so now we've got it down to a science. We're going to the Golden Knights games and it's an event. 
Yes. And we're blessed that the tickets are free. Mm -hmm. And we're lower bowl, Jack Daniels Lounge access. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But to have that experience is unbelievable. And it's here in the desert. And when they first announced they're coming here, like, oh, no one's going to go to the games. Mm -hmm. Who's going to see hockey in the desert? Guess what? Yeah. That was the spearhead for the Raiders to come mm -hmm. for a $1.9 billion you know, stadium to be built. Yeah. That's natural grass. What? <laughs> the yep. grass pulls out and has I its own it. irrigation system. Again, and gets so Vegas. Sun. So it's Vegas. so Vegas. It's so, it, it boggles my mind. I'm waiting. I'm a diehard, just I've been a Yankee fan forever and used to used to be a season ticket holder when I, I lived there. I know. I I'm know. a Red Sox fan. I know. I know. We've had this talk years have, ago. I remember. But we love each other anyways. We love each uh, other Unconditionally. Yeah. Unconditionally. And yeah. I'm waiting for the A's are coming here. It's only a matter of time. And yes. if they're not ridiculously priced, like the, the Raiders, I was like, are you kidding me? That stuff. I'm like, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. But I want to get at least two season tickets for um, for when, when the baseball team comes. Because yeah. I'll go to all that. I, I would go, that, that is, to me, to have a beer and a hot dog mm -hmm. and watch baseball. I love baseball. That is, it doesn't get more American than that. No. You know, you can take your your Confederate flag or don't tread on me <laughs> flags and, mm -hmm. and all, no. You go to a baseball game, and and especially I'm lucky and blessed to have kids, yeah. and to be able to take them to yeah. do that, that's a memory they'll have forever. Yeah, you know that's that's the cool part of living here is the experiences you can do. Yeah, the the kids growing up today here are getting so many experiences that I never had. There, look, there's one experience I had growing up here that you just don't have anymore, which was the original Wet and Wild. And if you are from Vegas, you know exactly right what trip. I'm talking about because. Yes, we, I think it's Cowabunga Bay bought out Wet and Wild, but there's one in Henderson and one in the Southwest. It's not the same. You grew up going here. Your parents probably had a summer barbecue with their company every year. It was a spot to go. It's the only thing the kids are missing, but they've got all these sports teams and all these things they can go do that I never got the chance to, but I love it. It's, it I love it. And isn't Universal Studios coming here now? Is Universal Studios or somebody is coming over by Area 50, over think, by Area 15? I think they're talking about some like haunted Universal Studios okay. thing. Okay. That's not my jam. So I, it's been one in one ear out the other, but. Yeah, me, me neither. Yeah. But it's like, if, if my kids want to go, okay. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm down to try it one yeah. time. And if it's good, then we'll, you know, talk more. But it's that, I know that, you know, for a while, years ago, they tried to make us a family friendly destination. Mm -hmm. That didn't work very well. No. Uh, please. We're still like, it's you Vegas. know, when, you, when you've got guys handing you cards of, Women, mm -hmm. you know, visit your room as you're walking on the, you know, down the strip with your kids. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly, it, it's not Disneyland, uh, you know, and. But it's I, adult Disneyland it, it's, is what well, we call it. Amen. It's, it's what a, we call it. It is adult Disneyland. Mm -hmm. It is adult Disneyland here. And I think that, but they've found now a happy medium with, we're the sports entertainment capital of the world mm -hmm. now in Vegas. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now you can come here and bring your kids and go to a Golden Knights game. Yeah. Go to a Raiders game. I go to, I have season tickets to the uh, Desert Dogs, the cross team. Mm -hmm. now, they're not a very good team. I, like, I, okay. I think they've won like one game this year, but it's at Mandalay Bay mm -hmm. at their like Michelob Center thing. Okay. 10, 15,000 people. I'd say it's at 70% full. Okay. We have fun. Yeah. Like they've got the whole pyrotechnics things. The whole thing is, is going on. Yeah. And that's fun. And people don't think of Vegas a lot of times like that, but there's mm -hmm. so many other things to do here that you could bring your kids. You absolutely can. And, you know, back to kind of the Golden Knights and, and that stadium, if if there's kids, they're going to put them on the Jumbotron dancing. They're going to have their fun. But also, there there's Hyde at T-Mobile, so a nightclub at the top of the stadium, where half the time they're doing intermission shots for free. I didn't know that. It is. It's fabulous. There's a nightclub what? at T-Mobile Arena mm -hmm. where the Golden Knights play. Mm -hmm. Where is it? It's at the very top. So have you ever seen those kind of like triangle looking things that stand out over the stadium. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nightclub. So it kind what? of circles half of it. Yeah. Hide at T Mobile. So that's much hysterical. fun. I've definitely had a birthday or two there. Well, you're, but you're, you're, you said like once or twice a year. Yeah. That's your thing. Yeah. And it's, and it's fun. You watch a hockey game, have drinks with friends. It's a good time. It's, and now I guess there's like a club. Is it a uh, win? Has a club yes. in the end zone at, at, the, at, at Allegiant. Allegiant? Yes, they do. What? I know. But see, but you can do both here. You can. And that's, again, it's room for everyone. What a brilliant way mm -hmm. to co-market and co-brand the Vegas image of nightclubs, which mm -hmm. they make more money a lot of times now than gaming Yeah, uh, at a lot of the properties on the Strip. Mm -hmm. They kill it. 
And so whatever club it is that the wind has in the end zone, because I've just seen it on TV or I've seen friends of mine post on Instagram, hey, yeah. here I am. Well, okay. Yeah. But what a great way to, because the expectation is set. I can go, I can drink, mm -hmm. have a good time. Uh, extremely gorgeous people are going to be serving me mm -hmm. for, you know, $8,000 for a yeah. bottle of vodka that would cost me 25 at least discount liquor right. on Eastern and Henderson, but okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, but you can, you can get into that entire environment if you want to. You can. And that, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. But, actually. But the other thing that I love is that we also honor locals here. Locals are proud to be locals and locals love to honor local businesses. So T-Mobile has it and so does Allegiant where local restaurants have like a little stand there. So you're not eating, you know, the pizza that everyone's eating. You you have that barbecue spot. There's sushi spots. There's... um. Echo and rig sandwiches. I saw that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, and us locals love being local. It is so cool to have Echo and rig, Freed's. Mm -hmm. Freed's? Really? Free, I, don't get me wrong. I love Freed's. I live in Henderson. Yeah. Love me some Freed's. Yeah. And to have their, you know, they're not just signing contracts with McDonald's. No. Uh, you know, and, and doing all that and Pizzeria Uno. Mm -hmm. They are going after the locals to say, no, come on in. Yeah. And showcase what you have. To a to a global audience, yeah, is so cool. It is. I I love 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 that. Um, there was a place I I haven't been to a football game, but Jack and I went for a tour of the stadium about a year and a half ago. Okay, and they were closed, but I went through and saw like Davis's suite. We went in there and went out in the field, and mm -hmm. it was even done the tour. Do it. The tour is freaking awesome. Okay, it's pricey but worth every penny. But there was a place that had like I want to say two dollar or a dollar fifty hot dogs. Yeah, I'm like what. Yeah. This is, it's at Costco. I mean, yeah. This is awesome. So, because you're paying, I mean, it was, yeah, crazy. Yeah. I, I looked at lower bowl expensive. seats was just, it was, it was 75 grand for the, for the PSL. Mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't include uh, the season ticket. Yeah. It's just a licensing. I'm like, no. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I have three friends with season tickets oh, in, yeah. In, yeah. in various spots and, yeah. and yeah. But you know what? They've also gotten their money work on resale within the first year. And that's the thing is they're, they're, they're getting it back. Mm -hmm. And I just saw on the RJ that they're adding more suites. Wow. Yeah. They're, it's like $16 million or something like that, that Gosh. they're they're because of the need. People want them. And that was, a, those things yeah. sold out. Those suites sold out first thing. And they already mm -hmm. did an expansion before they opened. Yeah. They added more on. Now they're going to add even more on. And the cool part with them is they're saying every year we're going to keep doing updates to the stadium to make it a better environment for yeah. our customer. Which is so important. You have, oh. again, whether an individual or a business, you have to be willing to grow and improve. Well, the, the greatest example of that is the Thomas and Mack Center. Mm. Come on. I, I, I mean, and I remember I came here, I was 21, 20, mm -hmm. I was 21 years old. So this is 1991 okay. and saw Jerry Tarkanian. Okay. And Larry Johnson and Ackles and Augman, and this is when they ran the table and won everything and saw them. I mean, it was amazing, mm -hmm. right? But I remember being in this like stadium thing going, what? Mm -hmm. Like this is it? And they've literally made no changes whatsoever no. uh, to today. And that's sad, but yeah. through the grace of God, the Legion Stadium gets built and now all of a sudden UNLV is playing their football games there. Yep. What that does for recruiting is huge. It is huge. Huge. And so- It'll come along, but it, it's kind of like this old guard of, yeah. you know, of Thomas and Mac. And what's the stadium out in the middle of nowhere where the Rebels used to play football? I know what you're talking right? about. Right? Yeah. But it's just like, blow it up and put a mall there. I'm going to put a mall. I can't do a mall anymore, but do multifamily housing out there. Do something, yeah. right? Because Honestly, it's probably coming. It's, uh, it's probably coming. I guarantee it is. <laughs> I guarantee it is, my friend, because it, it's this is the biggest town where if you don't adapt— to what's coming, yeah. you're screwed. Adapt or die. Adapt or die. Yes. And that's Vegas. Yeah. Right? I mean, that, that's that's just how it is here. And any preconceived notions you have about Las Vegas, shelve them all yeah. until you're here for a while and experience stuff on your own. Yeah. Right? Um, okay. Just between you and I, nobody can hear this at all. Where's your favorite place for drinks? My favorite place for mm -hmm. drinks? Mm, I don't know if I have one. What's your favorite drink? My favorite drink? You know, it depends on the mood. So if I'm going out, um, most people can make a lemon drop martini correctly. Or if they have Excellent. the ingredients, I'll order a last word because not many people know what that is. What's a last word? Um, it is gin, green chartreuse, lime juice, and maraschino liquor. Oh, boy. 
and it's, it's it's earned its name. That's deadly. We only have one at oh, a time. That's deadly. Only one at a time. So, but I'm a I'm a wine drinker. So, I like a cute little wine bar. Grape Street. Love Grape Street. Grape Street's solid. Mm-hmm. OJ's there all the time. Every time I go there, OJ's there. Okay, I've never seen OJ. Oh yeah. I don't mm, yeah. I don't know if I care to see OJ. I don't care either. So. I, I I was uh, I had a friend of mine come in from out of town this summer, and we went to Jing. Mm-hmm. And this is it was early, like seven o'clock or so, and went for dinner. We got the booth. So you're overlooking the bar, which is great because I love the mm-hmm. people watch, and so did she. And there's OJ mm-hmm. with two or three other guys, and all older. And whoever his PR person is is brilliant because all we saw the entire time were women coming mm-hmm. up to him, getting their picture taken with him, and he stopped whatever he was doing every time somebody came up to him and asked to take his photo with him. Really? I'm like, that's a double murderer. Yes. But most of these kids weren't even born when that was happening, I think. Or just, they don't understand the gravity of what he did. And it's brilliant because with every single post of him going, hey, how you doing? He's a nice guy. He's a great guy. What? There's my picture with OJ. I know. That is a great ground and pound Mm -hmm. way to, you know, get your brand kind of shifted. And he was brilliant. I watched him. When things started to get jumping, like 9.30 or mm-hmm. so, he walked out. Then Irish goodbye, just walked out. It was hysterical. Interesting. Yeah. It was wild to watch that. But that's also Vegas. You'll just run into to anyone. Anyone. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we've all had, you know, you see famous people, you just leave them alone. You do. You just leave them alone. You do. You, do you, when you're working, you're at work. And when you're not working, don't you want to be left alone? Agreed. So that's kind of the way I see it. All right, final question. Who is, if anyone, the most famous person that you've seen or met since you've lived here? Mm, Britney Spears. Ooh, that's a good one. It was real quick. She was really sweet. Where? Oh, somewhere on the strip. We were just walking through the hotel that's years hysterical. ago, years and years ago. So back before we even knew about this conservatorship type stuff, but she was really that's sweet. Hysterical. So she was with people. Is she, is she is, like, is attractive in person? Yeah. She's cute. Yeah, this is at least five years ago, but yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Mine's Dave Chappelle. Really? Yeah. This, uh, it was September. Oh, okay. This past September at the Waldorf Astoria. Oh, okay. At the pool. We talked, like 10, the we, we talked like 10, 15 minutes. We talked. He's a great guy. Yeah. Him and just one of his buddies were like at the grill outside there by the pool. And I was there with Jack. And Alex was upstairs in the room. And we just started just shooting the poop and talked. And yeah, it was super nice guy. Yeah. I made him laugh. I'm like, I could die a happy man now. I I made him laugh. You're like, put that on the tombstone. Yeah. I made arguably the greatest comic of our generation laugh. (laughs) I love it. Oh, I've got it. Yeah. Thank you, my dear, for coming in. Thank you for having me. Will you come back again? I would. This is fun. Can always have a conversation with you. I'm glad. This has been great. We'll do it again soon. Sounds good. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.